Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to discuss with you. And uh, I speak about biodiversity and health. And I must say that uh, what Aki was already telling you was pretty fantastic. You have to remember that those controlled intervention studies, even placebo controlled intervention studies, which uh, their group uh, have really uh, uh, carried out, they are not the first in Finland. They are, the f they are the first in the world. That also tells you that we are just beginning to uh, find the evidence uh, how we can uh, get the biodiversity back to our life in a safe way. But nevertheless, uh, <coughs> I am a bit worried uh, of my uh, small granddaughter, Lovisa, there among wood anemones and looking with her innocent eyes to the future. What is it holding for Lovisa and all other children on the planet? The biodiversity force first defined in 19. 1992, so about 30 years ago, and it's variety of life on Earth, and it includes the genes, the species, and the ecosystems. And the ecosystem diversity promotes the stability through different mechanisms, which I'm not going to go in, uh, in any uh, detail. But nevertheless, biodiversity is the key to all life on Earth and its stability. Then I would like to uh, <coughs> correct a categorical mistake. We often think that we are here and the nature is there, when we should say we and the wider nature. Me ja muu luonto. And we also think that, okay, when we go to our summer cottages, that nature is so beautiful and everything is so smooth and nice. But it's also a battlefield and a survival game. Well, human body is an ecosystem. Our species uh, called also a holobion. And there are trillions of human cells, but even more of the microbiota. And if you think about the genes, in the human cell there are maybe around 20,000 genes, but 100 times more in this microbiota than comprising what we call uh, the microbiome. There are two, maybe two million genes in that microbiome. So who is the master? Uh, all you adults, you have follicle mites in your eye eyebrows. Have you thought about that? Ooh, mites there on my face. Well, <coughs> the biodiversity concerns both the macro and micro world. Uh, and in, in healthy natural environment, there are a lot of species but small amount. If you go to garden and the sun is shining, there may be a lot of butterflies, but if you look, at, look closer, there are only a few species. But if you go to a pristine rainforest, you don't see so many butterflies, but they are all of different species. And let me take a clinical example. If you get an inflammation on your skin, if you get an inflammation on your skin, the skin is, uh, it, it, it is, it is uh, having a very, very diverse microbiota, the normal skin. But it, when it's inflamed, the opportunistic staphylococci uh, uh, take, takes the dominance. Uh, and then you, ha you are scratching and, and, and you are in, in, in trouble. And may maybe you have to go to a doctor who is prescribing uh, a course of antibiotic to kill the dictator. And then the uh, corticosteroid to suppress uh, the inflammation. Well, it's the same in the human society. If the democracy collapsed, the dictators may take over. 
Well, let's go to uh, uh, Finnish and Russian Karelia. There on, th on the left you see that uh, in uh, 1940s after the war, the Iron Curtain divided Karelia in, into two parts. And in a way, creating a living laboratory. On the Finnish side, the urbanization and the so-called westernization started to uh, take place, the so-called great acceleration called by the British. While on the Russian side, while on the Russian side, the small-scale agricultural life sustained, and they were very much uh, self-supported. Well, we started this with uh, looking for uh, allergy and asthma, and the disparity is astonishing. Look at the hay fever figures in uh, school children. Hay fever and food allergy, they were almost non-existent on the Russian side. Then uh, when you look at the other figure there uh, uh, of adults born in 1940s and coming to younger generations, those born in 1980s, you see that the blue line, there the uh, blue line, the Finnish adults, uh, there is a gradual, almost a linear increase in the sensitization rate here, uh, indica indicator of birds pollen. Uh, why nothing happened on the Russian side, the red line. So if we would really understand why the younger and younger generations are more sensitized uh, to pollens, which are harmless, uh, we could might. Uh, understand the true reasons behind uh, this disparity and take steps from treatment to prevention. And indeed, if you look at the uh, skin and nasal microbiota, which we took from the uh, teenagers, they are profoundly different. They were much richer on the Russian side, uh, more diverse and richer, both the skin and nasal uh, microbiota. No question about that. Well, uh, where do we get the microbiota? Of course, from the environment. And uh, we first, we look at the drinking water uh, in, uh, in, in, in Pitkaranta, which is on the, on the northern shore, shore of Lake Ladoka, and also the schools uh, in Joensuu. And in Joensuu, it was so clean and sterile that you could put that into a bottle and, uh, and sell it in the market. But on the Russian side, there were a lot of uh, uh, living bacteria, more than 5,000 per milliliter elements, uh, living and, and, and dead elements of microbes. And it had in the logistic regression al analysis, when we, make, uh, when we took all the confounding factors into account, it had independent allergy protective effect. The drinking water in the school. Then we look at the dust, the house dust. And again, uh, the microbiota uh, in the Russian, uh, uh, Russian dust, it had uh, uh, independent uh, allergy protective effect. Well, <clears throat> the microbiota is really associated with up and down regulation of the genes. You see there the, 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 the green, uh, green uh, color uh, of the uh, Rus Russian genes and the Finnish genes, which are more yellow. So there was quite a difference in the regulation and expression of uh, these uh, genes. And then when we uh, look at the network of the uh, gene and uh, uh, gene regulation, gene expression and the, and the microbes, the network on the Russian side, it was really, really much uh, more dense and larger than on the Finnish side. If that would be a fishing uh, net, what net would you use? So you understand, it was much more alert all, all the time, all the time monitoring how we are exposed, what we eat, what we drink, what we inhale, what we touch. So then we had uh, with Ilka Hanski some public, uh, uh, public um, lectures there in the university and had a cup of coffee after that. And, we started to talk about, hey, come on, is this uh, decrease of biodiversity, is it interrelated 
to the increase of these uh, many of the diseases of the modern civilization. Here I have taken some of the Finnish statistics of uh, allergy and asthma, inflammatory bowel diseases, diabetes, uh, even uh, uh, more rare autoimmune diseases and uh, so forth. So are they somehow connected and interrelated? And already uh, Aki showed a little bit of this uh, figure, but that was a key to understand that a rich environment around the homes, uh, in terms of vascular plants, in terms of the land use, uh, it was uh, correlated, associated with rich skin microbiota, with balanced immune system and health. And there were not more than 112 uh, school children involved uh, uh, in this analysis. So it was, it, was, it was astonishing for us. But nevertheless, uh, the so-called biodiversity hypothesis emerged uh, from these observations and uh, uh, shortly decline in diversity of the microbiota Called, uh, causes microbial imbalance, disturbed immune response, and risk of inflammatory uh, diseases. And then it just might be that the bi big uh, part of the uh, uh, diseases of the modern civilization, like uh, uh, I said you're already diabetes, but also obesity, even Alzheimer's, there are uh, new studies on that, even depression, uh, cancer, they all seem to share uh, three features. Microbial imbalance called also dysbiosis, long-term immune dysfunction, and low-grade inflammation. Low-grade inflammation. So we are speaking about uh, nature loss. Biodiversity is a little bit uh, difficult concept to understand, but nature loss is very clear. It's very clear, nature loss. But nature loss is not only happening outside of us in the wider nature, it's also happening in us. It's happening in us. And the human microbiome is getting poor, uh, and that mediates the crosstalk of the human body, the ecosystem of human body uh, with the environment. And we are, in a way, we are protected by the two layers of biodiversity, uh, the outer layer from which we acquire the uh, inner layer. Uh, and when we are speaking about the modern uh, type of diseases, we often speak about risk factors. We speak about cholesterol, uh, 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 blood pressure, smoking, uh, use of too much, uh, using alcohol or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that thinking. But the other side of the coin is that we are not only are facing risk factors, but we are also losing protective factors. And these protective factors are from our evolutionary home. They are from soil, they are from natural waters, they are from air. And we are more or less in our lifestyle and modern urban environment, we are disconnected uh, from them. Uh, it's also important that uh, when you go to, to the forest now, if you go to, to the forest or if you go to the forest in spring, if you go to the garden, you smell. There are a lot of different smells. What are these smells? They are biogenic chemicals and more than 1,000 biogenic chemicals have been identified but we know very little of their clinical effect. There is an, uh, some new studies from Italy showing that inhalation of the plant emitted monoterpenes, uh, pinens, uh, can produce an anxiolytic effect. So if you go to the pine forest, you may get this uh, uh, effect. And of, of course in Finland, we do have Lisa Tyrväinen and, 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 he, and her group. They have studied that. The pulse rate goes down, the blood pressure goes down, and you feel better. And uh, there was a Nobel Prize given in 2016 to uh, a Japanese researcher, Oshinori. When he looked at these chemicals on the cellular level, they had, uh, uh, they had effect on the energy production of the cells and waste circulation. 
they are anti-inflammatory and, uh, and, uh, and they are uh, uh, antioxidant uh, and they relieve uh, anxiety. But we know very little, very little, no really controlled studies. So then you may ask that, uh, uh, what about the implementation of these ideas? Well, we have done uh, an intervention which took 10 years, but it's not a control because all the, few, all, all the uh, Finnish citizens were in, in, involved, they were uh, included uh, in the so-called allergy and asthma program. That, but the ideas, were, they were based on the Karelia uh, uh, results. And the idea was uh, we should uh, change from avoidance to immune tolerance and allergy health. And in fact, the goals were reached, of course, uh, very much by improving diagnostics and treatment, but also probably encouraging better contact with wider nature and physical uh, exercise. We invested two million euros uh, to educate the healthcare professionals, and also there was an information campaign to lay public, two million euros in 10 years. Then we calculated, then we calculated the, the cost savings, uh, the cumulative cost savings in 10 years. They were 1.2 billion euros. Two million investment, 1.2 billion euros, mostly because the disability uh, and uh, productivity loss went down. It's not controlled, but it shows the way. Well, children were very much uh, in focus. I could be the grandfather there playing with the grandchild. Look at the urban environment for the children and look at the natural environment. You can imagine what the children are touching, inhaling, drinking and uh, eating. Well, we have another uh, intervention, which is a so-called natural step to health, which is Lahti, uh, in the Lahti area, uh, regional health and environment program. And for the first time, we have uh, put together the public health goals to environmental uh, uh, goals. So there we, have, uh, uh, there we have chosen asthma, diabetes, uh, uh, depression, uh, and obesity as indicator diseases. And at the same time, we try to uh, uh, prevent them and stop biodiversity loss and climate change. It has been going on now for two years, so I don't really know the results, but it seems very promising because the people are now working together, the healthcare authorities, city of Lahti, and Lahti University campus. Well, a very practical issue. If you take a blueberry from the bush, if you take an apple to the tree, probably the most healthier way is it, eat it immediately. And I put 10 different uh, blueberries in sterile tubes, and I took them to Petri Auvinen in Viki, uh, who made the 16S DNA sequencing. And every, every uh, blueberry was a little bit uh, different very biodiverse blueberries. Uh, and it, 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 there is a new study which indicates uh, in Austria, in Finland, that if uh, you really take from the natural environment, uh, there are more microbes than if you cultivate them. Well, I'm just finishing. Already more than 500 years ago, Leonardo da Vinci made this famous Vitruvian uh, man drawing. So it was Leonard's attempt to relate man to nature. A small twist and the ex expression of the human body, the microcosm was related to the macrocosm and universe. Very, very genius from Leonardo. Well, you understand this. <laughs> Thank you.